Yeah, what do you want? Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. This may be the last time I will have a chance to talk to you. I just want to thank you for all that you have done for me. For saving me from the dark side. For accepting me on your journey. It is good to know that I have been of some value. I will prove my true worth to you. We will defeat Malak and save the Republic from the Sith threat once and for all. I pledge my life to your cause. I will stand by you till the end. Got something on your mind, do you? <laughs> Who said I left the Jedi? Well, technically I was only a Padawan. Not that that makes a difference to most, but as for the Order itself, no, I never left it. It left me. You know what I hate? Well, you know, lots of things really, but I'm old and easily annoyed, but that's besides the point. What I really hate are how most people view the Jedi. Everyone thinks that the Jedi are perfect, that they can do no wrong. They think the Jedi Council is completely incapable of injustice. <laughs> I guess you aren't as stupid as you sometimes act. No doubt you've been on the receiving end of Jedi justice at least once, eh? And I'm not even talking about how some of us fall to the dark side. No, that's plenty indication of our fallibility, but it's something else entirely. No, I'm talking about how more than often not, your average robe-wearing Jedi can try to do the right thing and still be completely wrong. That's true, but it's not what I meant. I guess I'm not being clear, am I? Come to think of it, I don't have to be clear. Someone my age is entitled to ramble, damn it! But for your sake, I'll try to explain. I'll tell you a little tale about a Jedi Master I once knew. Hortaf, I think. Or was it Hortoff? I could never get it straight. Where was I then? Oh, oh yes, Master Hortaf. He was a kindly old Jedi who meant well. But the most nearsighted thing in the core, I swear. He would walk into walls, knock over tables, mistake apprentices for rancor beasts, that sort of thing. And he was too proud to submit to proper treatment. Some used to counsel him in the urge to use the Force, Master Hordeth. Allow the Force to see for you. But he refused to believe that his eyes were failing. He simply squinted more and more as the years went on, the other Jedi resignedly passing it off as the amusing quirk of a compassionate old man. So, one day a young Padawan meets Master Hordath in the courtyard and, not knowing of his blindness, asks him for directions to the Council. Quite sure of himself, Hordath gave the lad directions, which happened to lead back outside and away from the Enclave. The Padawan is confused, naturally, and he asks if Master Hordath is sure, and of course Master Hordath says that he is. The Padawan suggests that perhaps he should ask someone else, but the proud Hordath now feels insulted. He tells the Padawan to take the route he prescribed and no other. Rather dejectedly, the Padawan did as he was told, and so ended up leaving the Jedi Order forever. It was decided that the boy's fate was to leave the Order anyway, though whether that was out of respect for Hordath or because the boy went on to something else, well, we'll never know. No, no, both of them were from before my time. Well before the Sith Wars, even. The tale is about blindness, and I thought the point was clear. At any rate, you think about it. You're the one who asked why the Jedi left me, remember? Now let's get going. My feet are itching for a good run. Got something on your mind, do you? Bad, bad men. Women, too, to be fair. Oh, indeed. They make a fine sandwich also. <laughs> but don't tell the Jedi Council I said that. <sighs> and just what gave you the impression that I know anything more about the Sith than you do? Oh, that's right. Damn the years of the young. I was expecting you to be your usual inattentive self when I mentioned that. So it's true, yes. I fought plenty of Sith. That was during the time of Exar Kun. Oh, 40 years ago now. Has it been that long? 
No, no, of course not. The Sith have come and gone for ages. They were not called the Sith many thousands of years ago, perhaps. But the dark side was always present, without a doubt. Oh, sure, occasionally the light side comes close to vanquishing the dark. But the dark always returns. The fact that Exar Kun was defeated didn't mean the Sith would never return, as they obviously have now. Everyone knows that. Uh, Exar was a Jedi who was corrupted by ghosts of the old Sith, or so they say. He attempted to conquer the Republic and create a new golden age of the Sith. Better to say he was defeated, but essentially, yes. The victory did not come easily, however. That is not a pleasant time to remember. After Exar Kun fell to the dark side, he attempted to recruit other Jedi to his cause. What surprised us, what took us completely unprepared, was how utterly successful he was. Many Jedi joined him and became Sith themselves. Why they did, I... I will never truly know, but they did. Battle broke out throughout the Order, pupil against the Master. We fought ourselves. Yes, more than difficult. Next to impossible. How do you fight against someone you love? Pah, I dislike such memories. It leaves a taste in the mouth that... Uh, it's a sadness I thought I'd put aside long ago. Ask me about the war some other time, just not now. I would prefer to be by myself for now. Got something on your mind, do? Not particularly. I suppose you're going to nag me until I cough it up, aren't you? Nothing is private anymore, it looks like. <sighs> There's no escaping it, I guess. So be it. My wife's name was Nayama. She was the Yukatis enforcer who shot me out of the sky, if you remember. My wife had plenty to do with the war. Upon meeting her, I knew right away that she was strong in the Force. That's why she was able to shoot me down. Nayama was a marvel of a woman. Fiery, determined, smart. She dragged me to the capital and foiled three of my attempts to escape prison. Oh, and that body. Well, yes, that. <clears throat> Needless to say, I eventually won her over. That was after I kidnapped her upon being broken out of the Yukata's prison, mind you. But, uh, that's another story entirely. At any rate, I wanted to train her in the Jedi way. The Council refused my request, naturally. I was still a Padawan at the time. I was an experienced Padawan, surely, but not yet ready to be a full Jedi, and certainly not ready to train another, especially not one so old as my wife. I did. I wasn't the first and I won't be the last. The problem with self-righteous folk is they think they're more right than everyone else. I believed in her and trained her in secret. I ignored her willful nature. I loved her too much to see fault in her. And she loved me too. I know she did. At the time, our love was a shared bliss. Better than anything I had known before or since. Exar Kun is what happened. Nayama was inspired by Exar's promises of a new golden age. She wanted to join him. She came to me, pleading with me to throw aside what she called the decrepit trappings of the Jedi. To join her in Exar's war. I hadn't thought so, not right then. I was too proud to believe that of her. I had trained her myself. I loved her. I pleaded with her to reconsider to think about all that she was throwing away. To think about what she would become. She would have none of it. Finally, in frustration, she attacked me. She drew her lightsaber and attempted to strike me down. It was a scene being repeated everywhere throughout the galaxy. Pupil against master. In my case, it was a long and terrible battle, but I defeated her. No, no, I had her at my mercy, disarmed and defenseless. She looked up at me and she knew. She knew I couldn't do it. But I should have. Sometimes I convince myself otherwise, but it's no use. She had fallen to the dark side when she raised her saber against me, and I let her go. To my shame, she went on to kill many Jedi during the war, until she herself was slain in the final battle. 
I grieved for her death, inevitable as it was, even as the Jedi Council put me on trial for my actions once the war was over. I had trained Nayama against their wishes. I had failed to kill her when I had the chance, and she went on to kill others. Not to mention that I had remained a Padawan throughout the war. A formality, perhaps, but with a trial, it had to be decided if I was worthy to become a Jedi at all. It was a travesty, of course. I told you that even the Jedi were capable of great injustices, didn't I? But I deserve to be tried. They found me innocent. Even though I deserved every punishment and more, they let me go. Mitigating circumstances, they said. I deserved compassion, they said. They said I had learned wisdom the hard way. For all I had done during the war, they wished to raise me to full Jedi status at long last. That, that was when the Jedi left me. That was when they failed me. No, maybe you don't at that. They may have been able to forgive me. I could never forgive myself. I... yes, I do, I suppose. Does that surprise you? Uh, it is all so long ago, lost in the winds, I suppose. Nobody cares what an old man believes anymore, do they? Let's continue on with the task at hand. I would prefer to think of the present today. Got something on your mind, do you? Oh, that was not until many years later to tell the truth. I spent quite some time wandering the galaxy. Why wouldn't they? I had refused my promotion to Jedi. I was a Padawan who had left the Order, nothing more. I traveled from one civilized system to the next, never staying long. I don't even think I knew what I was searching for. It wasn't as if my travels were pleasant either. There were plenty of folks who distrusted the Jedi after the war, or worse. If people weren't treating me with suspicion, they were looking at me with greed. I don't know how many thought they could make use of me for their own ends. I got so sick of the treachery and deceit. I left the civilized parts of the galaxy and headed instead for the uncivilized parts. Actually, I was on my way somewhere else when I crashed landed on Kashyyyk. The ship I was using was a rust bucket. I'd taken some damage passing through an unexpected asteroid field, as I recall. But I wasn't completely without some systems. I could still guide her a bit when I crashed. It wasn't what I would call the smoothest landing, especially considering I ended up smack at the depths of the Shadowlands. But I lived. <laughs> I'm no mechanic, and besides, after you plunge nose first in the trunk of a five kilometer high tree, chances are you don't have much ship left. Sure, why not? Seemed like an interesting enough place to spend a couple of decades exploring. Hmm, that was a challenge at first. You've seen the kind of creatures that exist down there, and you miss the really big ones. I was still able to rely on the Force to keep me safe for the most part. The rest of the trick is keeping out of the way of most of the Predators. No, oh, that's true. Still, most of the creatures grow accustomed to me, and I to them. At least none of them ever heard of a Jedi. Bah, what do you know? I'd done enough wandering by that point, thank you very much. I felt at peace in the Shadowlands. Oh, they did at first, oh yes. I can't say I was overly pleased to encounter a group of indigenous giant carpets either, I can assure you of that. Well, that was after two decades of helping them. They certainly didn't trust me at first. When I could, I would assist a few young ones who would get lost in the Shadowlands or were attacked unexpectedly by the wildlife. I must say, for a while there the Wookiees actually thought I was some kind of benevolent forest god. Amusing, really. I set them straight eventually. At first, when the slavers took to hunting down lone Wookiees in the fringes of the Shadowlands, I did my best to divert them. Later, when Shundar made his deal, I didn't see any point. I wasn't here to save them from their own sad follies, after all. Nonsense. I had no idea that's what they were thinking for a long time. 
I just thought they were being friendly neighbors, leaving fruit and such for me. Later, when I started to understand some of their grunting, I realized they would say prayers to the hairless one before descending into the forest. <laughs> hairless one. I used to have plenty of hair, I tell you. <clears throat> At any rate, it took a few bruises, but I set the record straight. I traveled to Rookworo and met with the chieftain in front of everyone. Freyr swatted at me just to see if I was real or not. I was real, and while it was a light swat, Wookiees are terribly strong. I was knocked out cold for a day. The Wookiees all thought it was quite funny. Not really. Kashik is a place you can feel very small in. It felt good to devote my time to helping people and living simply. What can I say? I did it all for the Wookiees. The Wookiees? Well, okay, maybe I needed some time on a quiet and remote planet, but if you ever need a friend, an incredibly strong hairball isn't a bad call. I suppose I am, in a way, despite the smell. For a race of gardeners, they've developed quite interestingly. You remember the alien computer, correct? Kashik was meant to be an agricultural planet. The Wookiees were made for a reason, or at least that's what I'm thinking. But I'm an old man who's had a long time to develop that opinion, so don't argue with me. At any rate, we should be moving along, don't you think? If you sat around this long in the Shadowlands, attack would eat you. Got something on your mind, do you? Are we back to that again? way for me to approach this. Uh, perhaps it's time for a little story. You just keep quiet there, you. I've had to put up with all your busybody questions, haven't I? Well, now you listen to a story, dammit! <clears throat> now, where was I? Oh, yes, the story. You almost made me forget about it. Nice try, but I'm not that old just yet. <laughs> now then, a young man sees a terribly venomous snake in his small village. Nervous, he watches the snake carefully until it leaves. The young man follows the snake into the forest. He clears the branches out of its path and helps it over obstacles. He even works to keep it fed. Shush! Many nights pass, and still the young man continues to follow the snake. He even follows it into the sands of the great desert. In the desert, the snake eventually grows hungry. It turns and bites the young man. It's poison quickly working its way into his system. Finally, curious, the snake looks at the boy as he lays dying and asks, Why were you foolish enough to follow me all the way out into the desert? The boy looks back and replies, Did I follow you? I thought I was leading you away from everyone else. And then he died. Well, now, that's what I wanted to see for myself. I've told you before that you have a destiny before you. This does not mean, however, that your future is already written. They are not the same thing. You have the choice of which direction you take your destiny in. More than engine-sucking Andor, certainly. But even he had a choice. So far, you've chosen to take the lighter path. Can you stay that course, even through the challenges ahead? We'll have to wait and see. I'm not here to judge you or tell you which path to take. I'm here ready to offer you my help, should you ask for it. I do that because I think it's important. More important than remaining in my home and pretending the galaxy doesn't exist. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm rather glad I came too, really. You're a fine young lad. I hope... I hope things turn out well for you. Now then, I've chatted enough for one lifetime. Let's get this show on the road, shall we?